Hello everyone. Um, my name is Katalin Russo and together with my colleague Johan van der Gronden uh, we would like to talk to you in this video uh, about our recently published book on European competition law uh, titled Competition Law in the EU uh, Principles, Substance, Enforcement. Uh, now, um, I would like first to say a few words about ourselves. Um, we both work for the International and European Law Department at Radboud University in Nijmegen. Uh, I am Associate Professor of European Law and my colleague Johan, he is Professor of European Law. Additionally, he also works as a State Councillor in Extraordinary Service at uh, the Dutch Council of State. So the purpose of this video is to briefly uh, introduce uh, uh, our recently published book. Um, first of all, I will explain to you the reasons why we wanted to write this book. Uh, and then I'll give you a brief um, um, incursion in the setup of the book. Uh, then Johan will focus a bit more on the key features of the book. So why did we want to write this book? Uh, first, um, we wrote this book uh, with uh, our students in mind. Um, we wanted a book for advanced competition law students, um, but also a book that we can use for the courses that we teach outside the faculty. So from this point of view, courses such as training um, of uh, uh, competition law judges or um, training uh, um, of in-house uh, lawyers. Um, we also wanted a book which is concise, uh, but at the same time a book that does justice to the, um, to the main themes in competition law, um, while also tackling the recent developments in this field of law. Last but not least, at the heart of this book is the interplay and the relationship between European competition law and the, the national regimes in the member states, um, a matter which Johan will detail a bit later on in this video. Uh, now, um, with, all, with, with this purpose in mind, um, we uh, would like to also acknowledge uh, um, the work that Edward Elgar did. Uh, we found their flexibility and professionalism, uh, which uh, helped us a lot in bringing this book to the public. Um, so briefly, the setup of the book. Um, we divided the book in, uh, in six parts. Um, essentially, we start with the prerequisites of competition law. We deal with the um, objectives of competition law and the main schools of thought. Then we also explain certain key concepts and uh, categorizations which are used in competition law. Uh, and then we uh, move on to the economics of competition law. In part two, uh, we focus on antitrust law. Um, we deal with Article 101 and Article 102 of the treaty. Um, uh, and we go a bit more in depth uh, in uh, aspects relating to the cartel prohibition, but also uh, the important block exemption regulations which are applicable in EU law. When it comes to abuse of dominance, we focus on the exclusionary behavior of dominant companies. We also focus on digital markets, and we also focus on the uh, um, a good range of types of uh, uh, abusive behavior which can take place in practice. Part three of the book deals with the enforcement of the competition law rules. Uh, we focus also on public enforcement and on private enforcement. And in part four, we deal with the substantive and procedural matters relating to concentration control in the EU. Part five deals with the competition law uh, uh, rules addressed to the member states. And this is where we focus on um, the union loyalty principle on services of general economic interest and also on state aid matters. The last part of the book, part five, wraps up uh, um, our analysis and looks forward to the new challenges and developments that are foreseen in EU competition law. The point of departure of the book is European competition law. Every chapter starts with analyzing important concepts of competition law. However, the importance also of national competition law has grown. The enforcement of the competition rules at the domestic level has got a lot of, of attention, also due to the modernization process. So therefore, almost every chapter also pays attention to national competition uh, law and also to various systems of national competition law and how those concepts play out in practice. The majority of the book starts, of course, with analyzing European competition law, but then at the end we also pay attention to some concepts 
of various jurisdictions of national competition law. The book also takes into account the latest developments that have taken place. For instance, we pay attention to the Google cases and um, uh, also, of course, uh, the importance of digital markets and gatekeepers. How do gatekeepers operate on the market and what is the response of competition law to gatekeepers? And uh, we also don't forget about the uh, corona crisis, the current corona crisis we are now in. And also the impact of the corona crisis of competition law is discussed. For instance, we analyze the state aid measures taken in response to the corona crisis and the uh, national lockdowns, and especially the way the Commission has reviewed those, uh, 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 those measures in the light of the state aid uh, rules. Moreover, we pay attention to well-known concepts and, uh, of competition law and the challenges which are ahead of us. Um, the focus is also on enforcement. Enforcement plays an important role. Of course, we analyze Regulation 1 and 2003. But on top of that, we also pay attention to the uh, recently adopted directive uh, on uh, the uh, empowerment of the ECM, the ECM Plus directive. Uh, and next to that, of course, private enforcement is really taking off in uh, the European Union in the various member states of the EU. And therefore, <coughs> We also analyze private uh, enforcement at great length in our book. We have written our first edition on competition law, our first book on European competition law. It's clear that competition law is confronted with big challenges. How will it respond to the emergence to digital markets? And how will it deal with the aftermath of the corona crisis and the call for accommodating general interest issues in the application of the competition rules. And closely related to the, these questions, these issues, is the question of how to respond to the climate crisis and which role will competition law play in um, the Green Deal. And it is for sure, we think, that the relationship between European and national competition law will continue to play a prominent role, also in the future. In the near future, for instance, we have to address the question how to deal with the Brexit. What does it mean for the application of the competition rules uh, that the UK has left the EU? It's a privilege to explore competition law, as at the end of the day, competition law is all about appreciating the gains of the free market and balancing these, these gains with other significant values and benefits.